day viewers and welcome to another segment of Budget in Focus. Today we are joined by Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, the Honorable Nigel Darmlal, who will be discussing Budget 22, 2022 with us. Minister Darmlal, welcome to the program. Thank you, Shaquille, and good evening to your viewers as well. And I'm happy to be here to share with our viewers uh, our bit on budget 2022. Well, we're glad that you're here. Uh, the budget theme for this year is steadfast against all challenges, resolute in building our one Guyana. We know the president has spoken a lot about building our one Guyana and it's the largest budget, a people-centered budget at $552.9 billion. But before we get into the budget, let's set a benchmark to what was there before. So can you please guide us about on, on the rollout of initiatives last year, how successful was that um, through your ministry? Well, uh, if I were to go back even far, further, uh, when His Excellency took office, one of his, well, his first speech in Parliament was to ensure that we focus on delivery. And even whilst we were focused on delivery, he laid the platform for building a united Guyana. And so you will find that a lot of uh, what we are doing as a government uh, requires us to work in all communities. And so last year and the previous years, and this is our third budget, we had uh, a shortened one in 2020. Last year we had a, a full budget as uh, a full budget, and this year this massive 552.9 billion. So during the course of last year, I, I believe that uh, we were outstanding in terms of how we've been able to transform our country. Uh, not just at an infrastructure level or a tangible level, but also at a non-tangible level in uh, social services and welfare support, in building community activism. I believe that those things are also necessary that even whilst you see physical development, uh, lives are also changed. Uh, we have seen uh, during the course of last year the delivery of services in areas that uh, didn't have those services before. We have constructed schools uh, and, and health facilities in areas that never had those before. And so this year, you are going to find uh, us moving, taking this to another level. As a matter of fact, uh, when the Minister of Finance spoke, uh, he spoke very clearly about this budget being the launch pad. If His Excellency also spoke about this budget being the platform from which our country is going to elevate out of uh, what it currently uh, is at this point in time. Since we have gotten into office, we have not imposed any new taxes. So this is our third budget and there are no new taxes. As a matter of fact, what we have done is uh, we have removed uh, what we used to call the hardship measures Burden that were imposed by, by the last government. And so residents can and, and our citizens can expect uh, a lot uh, greater support uh, and expansive disposable income uh, they are going to see, and, and the budget speaks very clearly to how we are going to be putting monies into people's pockets. Yes, and while you're on that, we're going to go into some of the budget measures. I know um, this might not necessarily be on the your purview, but a lot of people are excited to know that the Because We Care Cash Grant initiative for school children has gone up from 25000 to $30,000. Tell me about the impact of that and, and why that decision was taken. Well, the, the entire government, we work as one government. So whatever is in my ministry is in the purview of other ministers of government as yes. well. Um, our cabinet is very unified in, in this way. And so <coughs> the, the, the Because We Care Cash Grant, uh, last year I participated in the, the distribution exercise when uh, each child received uh, $19,000, 15 plus uh, four. This year, uh, as you're aware, they are going to receive uh, $30,000, 25000 plus five, five for the uniform and 25000 the, the the cash grant. Uh, we have made a commitment uh, when we campaigned that we were going to raise the, the Because We Care grant every single year until it gets to $50,000 uh, in this first uh, period of our governance, this first five year. And so that is, is, is what we have, we made this commitment to our people and uh, we believe that in building trust with our people, we have to ensure that we uphold the commitments that we've made to them. The, the cash grant has, uh, last year, uh, the impact has been tremendous. This year it is going to be even more significant because for a number of reasons. 
<coughs> we are struggling in a pandemic. There are many village economies, even livelihoods affected across our country. So this is in addition to it uh, providing welfare support to people. It is also going to enliven the, the, the local economy because when, when these monies are spent in the local economies across the regions, uh, you, s you, you, you would see the, the economic activity evolving and, 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 and so businesses are going to be created, more people will be employed. So <coughs> the, there, there are direct and direct in, in impacts of the cash grant and, and uh, I, I think that this is what separates us from the, the previous government, that we are focused, our, our focus is people-centered, our focus is ensuring that everyone gets some support out of what we do as a government. And it's a lot of people say, it's, it's common knowledge that, in, you know, the way a government addresses or takes care of its people, the way a government treats its people, um, tells a lot about the country. And the Because We Care Cash Grant is indicative of the government extending its aid to the people. But we're also seeing that pensioners as well are getting additional support. Let's speak about that. Yeah, um, and, and again, this is a commitment that we've made. Uh, when we took office, the pension was 19,000. Uh, we, we were able to get it now to 28,000. Uh, we, we made a commitment as well that we are going to get it to 40,000. I believe that the way it is going, we may end up beyond that, but I, I can tell you that uh, President Ali and his government, we are very focused on making sure that people's lives are taken care of. Uh, at some point in time, some of us are going to get to that age, and uh, we, 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 ha we have to take it very seriously. One of the, the very novel things that we have implemented uh, since we returned to government is that we are trying as much as possible for pensioners to be paid within their communities. And so I know for a fact uh, the Ministry of uh, Human Services and Social Security, in conjunction with uh, the arms of the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development in the regions, we have been working assiduously to make this happen. Uh, we, we still have some areas where uh, we were not able to get that done, but uh, this year, as you are going to see pensioners, uh, the support services that are provided to pensioners, that we will intensify those and, and enhance them. So the cost before, uh, one of the, the things we had found before was that pensioners had to travel long distances to get to a pay center. This time, we are actually in communities making sure that they don't suffer the hassle of, of moving and, and many of them are also relatively elderly and uh, mobility is an issue. Particularly uh, in the outlying areas. Particularly in out outlying areas, especially in the, in the hinterland. Yeah. Uh, people used to travel previously to a center. Some of them used to pay a Tusho, for example, our village leader, a sum of money out of their meager pension just to collect. Wow. So what we have been doing now is we are going into every single village to make sure that they get paid within their villages. And since we're speaking about, you know, ensuring that the village economies and, uh, is it are in enhanced um, and that people have more disposable income in their pockets, the income tax threshold has, has increased from six to five thousand to seven to five thousand dollars. What what tell let's discuss that and and taking into account the rising um, cost of you know consumables um, worldwide and also that that is also being felt here in Guyana. What impact will that have? Yeah well naturally I, I be, uh, all of the reports have shown that uh, prices of globally prices have risen um, especially for you know the, the regular basket um, th there, are there, are, there are a number of reasons for that one of it has to do with what COVID has done to many of the, the productive enterprises across the world in, in the case of Guyana we are no different yeah, uh, we're not insulated <laughs> right we're not insulated yeah. and um, and so a lot of what we produce also is dependent on what happens on the foreign market we import fertilizer we import uh, other inputs into into a productive sector and so naturally you will find that uh, the cost will increase uh, what we found too was that um, the supply chain that has been affected tremendously by COVID and so because of, of, of logistical challenges then uh, supply becomes affected and so naturally when supply becomes affected prices rise we have had uh, uh, you know devastating rainfall floods uh, last year which uh, practically damage the entire agricultural sector in our country and a massive part of our productive sector. So this year, 
uh, we have made the commitment that we are going to put a lot of support to make sure that th the cost of living issues are, are alleviated. And so that is why you find that this budget is so heavily focused on making sure that cost of li living issues are, uh, are, are, are dealt with. Uh, and so, you know, the, the regular person does not feel it as much as maybe they did during the course of last year and uh, latter half of 2020. Definitely, definitely. Now let's zero in a bit more on your ministry. $5 billion has been allocated to launch a more advanced uh, form of the Community Infrastructure Improvement Project, commonly known as SIP. Tell us a bit more about this project first and what the additional monies will do. All right. Um, so yes, we, we, we have actually uh, increased substantially uh, the support that is provided to, to this uh, program I I within the, the, the sector. Uh, this is going to focus in addition to all that the other agencies of government and ministries of government will be doing in communities. Uh, we are spending a lot of resources on making sure that uh, our communities are enhanced. Uh, only a few weeks ago, His Excellency the President, no less a person than the President himself, had on his gloves, his rake, and he was in different parts of Georgetown cleaning Georgetown. Uh, we have intensified that across the country, and I think that uh, persons have been seeing the change. Uh, this is going to take a, a cultural revolution, but I hope that uh, people are going to catch on to it very quickly because our vision for Guyana is much different from what, it, what happened in the past. Uh, we, we, we want to build a modern country. We want a country where uh, everyone could feel comfortable and there must be national pride. People must uh, be patriotic towards uh, their own country. And so building community infrastructure uh, plays a great part in all of that. So you are going to see massive development in small projects driven by communities. We, we've been able to establish quite a lot of um, uh, community organizations that, that would be driving this part of our program. And so we have to provide support to them to make sure that little things, uh, many, many times people get affected by the things in front of them. Yeah. And so this is a lot of the resources that we have now will be geared towards addressing uh, those things. I like that you said it's community driven. Actually, SIP workers are employed from the communities. So let's talk about the employment aspect. Yeah, um, we, have, uh, we have about 2,000 uh, community enhancement workers. Uh, they are paid directly by the government. Uh, when we took office, as a matter of fact, it has some history. The president himself, he launched this program when he was the Minister of Housing and Water uh, many years ago, yeah. prior to, to 2015. And so as soon as he came into office, one of his first engagement, public engagements that I've attended with him, uh, one of the things he spoke to me about is to make sure that this program is intensified and that, that people are remunerated, that their stipend is increased. So we increased it from last year from $25,000 to $35,000 per month. Every person earns, uh, works, sorry, for uh, 16 half days per month. And so we have seen a lot of uh, transformation in our communities. Uh, it is uh, a chicken and egg issue where uh, NDCs, for example, claim they have no resources, but people also claim that they have to see work done before they pay. So we have been using the community enhancement workers to, to bridge that gap and to make sure that they, they get into communities and, 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 and get the place fixed up. Um, these individuals are chosen by residents of, of, of these communities. We try as much as possible to get people who are in need of a job or ne in need of an enhanced livelihood. And so that is, why, that is how we ask community to nominate these people. Uh, and, and, and we have them in all 10 regions in all 70 NDCs. We have them in all 10 towns. So I think they've, 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 they've been doing a tremendous job. And this year, we are going to, to provide more support to them as well. You spoke about the local government structure and uh, the NDCs and so on. So let's move on to that. Um, some $714 million mm -hmm. has been budgeted to enhance the work of the local democratic organs, commonly known as uh, LDOs, to so that they can meet their responsibilities. Let's speak about that. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, one of the issues affecting many of our LDOs, and in this case, more particularly NDCs and municipalities, uh, <coughs> is the whole issue of their access to resources. 
and uh, I believe that and the president has uh, made resources available and uh, because we believe that uh, we have to to provide the the, the wherewithal for these uh, organi um, these bodies to be able to be of better service to to our community so we have put more resources again this year and hopefully with proper management they'll be able to have a greater impact in our communities and since we're still on um, local uh, democratic organs city hall we mm -hmm. all know the state of city hall it's an it's an eyesore in the city and it's becoming more and more of an embarrassment but government has has made some strides to get the building uh renovated some 666 Point eight million dollars will go towards that. Let's talk about the works that will on the Yes, um, in 20 August 2020, at the first cabinet meeting I attended, the president established a task force to deal with the city. And, and I have to repeat this every time because I believe that there are some elements who do not want us to, to, to say, how, say, say the truth about what is happening in the city. Uh, this task force has been able to come up with a plan uh, for the government uh, on how we would be able to provide resources for the development of Georgetown. Uh, resources whether directly to the City Hall or resources indirectly, but for the greater development of Georgetown. We have spent uh, last year, uh, through our ministry, for example, alone, close to $150 million on city rehab rehabilitation, including providing monetary support to City Hall. The Ministry of Public Works, they would have done uh, almost all of the roads in the town and the, maintain the maintenance and construction of new roads and bridges. The Ministry of Agriculture mm -hmm. through the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority, they have been dealing with practically all of the issues related to drainage in our city, including the management maintenance of pumps and sluices yeah. in, in our city. Uh, city uh, the city itself earns about $2.2 billion per year. We have uh, massive issues in terms of their accountability. We have massive issues in terms of how they manage their resources, how they deploy and allocate resources as well. Uh, this year, we uh, uh, and the budget has spoken very clearly on it, uh, we, we are going to be spending from our ministry alone, as, as, as reported, in excess of $666 million in the city. The Ministry of Public Works will be spending quite a, over a billion dollars in the city. The National Drainage and Irrigation Authority, Authority Ministry of Agriculture, they'll be spending a few hundred million dollars as well. So, and we have already uh, seen transformation taking place in the city. We have a lot of work to do. This iconic structure called City Hall has been on our agenda as soon as we got into government. And we have taken the bull by the horn and we are going to restore it. We have made that commitment to the people of Georgetown and to the rest of Guyana. And every commitment that we've made, we intend to uphold it. So it has not been done before. We are going to do it now. And despite all of the criticisms that, that certain elements of, of the political opposition would want to make about uh, Georgetown, I believe that our government and this government in particular has shown tremendous interest uh, in the development of Georgetown and we are motivated to work towards the, the development of our capital city. This is our center. And uh, you know this is, this is a microcosm of what our country is. This is the image of our country. And so we are going to be spending, again, over and over, more resources to transform Georgetown. And it's not just the monies that were mentioned for the, for, for the local democratic organs that will be going towards Georgetown. As you said, many of the other ministries are also, also have budgeted I line items um, that will cater specifically uh, for Georgetown. So well, as a matter of fact, uh, Georgetown does not build a road. The city council does not build roads and bridges. The city council spends over $120 million per month to pay staff. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I shudder to think when I first met the mayor and they told me that they had four brush cutters to weed Georgetown. For all the wards? For all the wards. We have 15 wards, right? And uh, 15 constituencies, actually. And uh, it, it is outrageous. I mean, they have a lot of money, $2.2 .2 billion they collect. Uh, <coughs> we manage, the government manages Higgs Bosch by providing, we spend about uh, 
but between 23 to 25 million dollars per month to manage the sanitary landfill. City Hall spends about 20 million dollars per month to collect garbage and take there. And, and we still have many of these issues. I believe that uh, the council has to get out of the management and the council has to focus on providing direction. And as long as uh, we are in government, uh, politicians have to focus on policy and we have to allow the administrators to deal with administration and management uh, and, 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 and take politics out of it. And that is how you're finding the transformation taking place. They, they, they will criticize, but uh, that, that, that is the way, that is how uh, a good government work. Ac yeah. work. Actually, that is how uh, good governance is supposed to be pursued. Um, so there, there should be no political taint into what obtains. Uh, the opposition stayed away from helping to clean Georgetown, but we had councillors of, of the PNC, of the APNUFC, working with us on that day when the president was out, and I'd like to commend them. Uh, we had Miss Richards in South Georgetown. We had Akim Peter uh, also who came out in support. Right now we have cleaning going on in Madia. Madia is controlled by the PNC, but the councillors are out there cleaning with us. Uh, we have uh, this weekend we are in, in Burbies in Region 6, and the entire Region 6, they have a program to, to start cleaning up. Uh, region 10, uh, and in this case, uh, Linden, uh, the mayor whom I spoke to, she has given commitment. The regional chairman of Region 10 has also given me commitment. And so we expect that on Sunday that uh, there is going to be some massive work also in those areas, as we will be doing across many, many uh, NDCs as well in the country. And, and speaking about sanitation and, and mm -hmm. cleaning of, of the environment, um, some $1.5 billion is budgeted to enhance sanitation management. Uh, what can citizen that citizens expect through this allocation? Well, this has been one of our uh, sorest issues as a country, the whole issue of sanitation, uh, which really speaks to garbage collection, disposal, the entire management of solid waste. Um, and, and our residents, our citizens, they, they have to play their part in all of this. Uh, we have uh, taken, we are going to take this issue and we have taken it uh, directly head on. Uh, we are spending a lot more resources on developing the infrastructure in different parts of the country. In all of the regions, we intend to have fully functional uh, landfill sites, um, whether at the dump site level or elevated to a landfill status. Uh, the construction of access roads. We also have to do a lot of the environmental safeguards have to be put in place. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think you mentioned one of those things earlier to me. Um, uh, and that will be done at Hague's Bush, but we have to also do some of those things in different parts of the country. We have the Environmental Protection Agency that they work very, we work very closely with them to uh, where they give advice in terms of uh, what uh, environmental safeguards have to be put in place. So Region 7 in Bartica, we are going to do, do, do a lot of work there. By the rubble where that uh, facility is, has been, it's practically in the middle of, of the town and, and we have to find some alternative. Uh, we, we have uh, s begun work in Port Kaituma. Uh, we will extend into Leguan, Wakenam. In some of the Amerindian villages, the big ones, they have requested uh, some sort of uh, <coughs> facility that is more regulated. So we are going to be working in some of those big villages. Uh, in, in, in Region 2, we are currently uh, building a new one, and we will ex continue to expand that th this year. Region 5. Uh, they've never had one, so we are currently, uh, we have a contract in place for one at Blairmont, and so we are going to expand on that as well. Region 6, same thing. Uh, so <coughs> across the entire country, we have a lot of work we have to do uh, at Higgs Bush as well. Uh, late some last year. Some $105 million. Yes. That's for the viewers, because <laughs> you had mentioned, because we had this conversation offset. Um, some $105 <laughs> million dollars will be used to design and construct a gas management system and storm water ponds at Higgs Bosch. Yeah, so uh, that is an ongoing uh, exercise that we have to do as we upgrade the facility. We have closed cell one. We are currently a few months already into cell two. Uh, we have four cells that we have to, 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 to build in, in total. And uh, <coughs> all of these environmental safeguards uh, we, have, we have to put in place. Uh, last year, we were able to get a donation from Exxon. 
uh, they provided uh, a 100 ton uh, scale for us so we are also able to monitor the uh <coughs> the the movement of of solid waste yes. in there as a matter of fact um if i were to use this opportunity uh, we produce uh, close to in the regulated uh, collection about 900 metric tons of solid waste per day across the country wow. and um, I think that is possibly half of what or two-thirds of what we, we actually produce on a daily basis. So uh, we, it, it's we still continue to, to, to do work on, on solid waste management and I, I just hope and, and we are beseeching our citizens to play their part. Uh, there is absolutely no excuse for dumping garbage on the road, absolutely no excuse. There is no excuse for dumping garbage in our waterways. Uh, <coughs> you have to have your receptacles if you're business people. You should uh, uh, ensure that uh, you, you make provision for waste receptacles. If you're a household, you also have to make provision for your own waste receptacles. We will come and collect them. Uh, but I, I we have found that there are many residents and many businesses that do not practice good solid waste management. Definitely. And, and and, and I think that uh, it, is, it is a culture that uh, we have to change. And you have a government and, and a minister who is going to take it head on. We have to transform our country. Why? There's no reason why we want to have a beautiful country, but people are still dumping garbage. I, it is an attitudinal thing. It is not just about uh, claiming that there is no collection. If you have your receptacles in yeah. your yards, then th that solves almost uh, half the problem. Yeah, and, and I, I'm glad that you mentioned businesses and, and households needing to have their receptacles because many times I would walk in, be walking around town, Georgetown or other parts of the country and I'm trying to throw a water bottle. I just drank for $100 and I have no way to throw it. And I guess once you have those systems in place, businesses play their part and households as well, we can curb um, this mm -hmm. nasty culture um, some people have in the country. Yeah, and I mean, uh, it, it is a way of elevating people's standard of living, Definitely. cleanliness. And <coughs> that is why I found it very strange when Mr. Norton from the PNC and even the mayor of Georgetown, they publicly ask people to stay away. I mean, how could you? I mean, this is not a... Cleanliness is not a political not issue. A political issue. All right? Cleanliness has more to do with who you are as a person. And so our image has to transform. And, and we are going to make sure that we clean this country. Uh, we have begun. And luckily, all of what you see happening now, resident persons are sending me videos, pictures, even in their own communities of the rec recalcitrance. And we have a good support now from the enforcement agencies, and uh, including City Hall. The city police have been doing almost all of the arrests right now in Georgetown and, and the prosecution. Uh, in the rest of the country, you know, the Guyana police force, they have been very helpful. And so we want to continue that. There, I think in a few months, uh, when everyone realizes that not just the government, but the residents themselves are serious about keeping their environment clean, their yeah. surroundings clean, things are going to change. Well, we look forward, we look forward to that and, and really happy that Georgetown, um, in many parts that would have been cleaned and other parts of the country that they're starting works and continuing works that those environments, you know, it's much more livelier. So when you have a clean neighborhood, the price of your property increases, yeah. the quality of your life uh, would also you're be healthier. enhanced. You're healthier. Because so because it's, be right, it's a public as health as issue as, as, as well. Yes, it is. So, so, you know, we, we would like, I, I, I know some people get upset, but uh, imagine the ones who are affected now or who have been the perpetrators currently that, that have been going through prosecution, that they are basically the, the, the pioneers of the change because uh, you know, they are the ones who will be face the, the brunt of what is happening. But uh, let them see this in good light. This is not a punishment. This is basically a way of life that we have to change. Definitely. And uh, we've spoken a lot about sanitation and a, a very important topic. But let's now look at some of the major uh, initiatives or, or programs that we, w that we will see across uh, the various regions. Yeah, well, um, within the local government and regional development uh, sector, uh, we have been, a, uh, this year, we are going to be spending close to $71 billion, uh, which is quite substantive than previously. And so 
in the regions, uh, we are going to be spending uh, about 60 billion of it in the 10 regions. And, and so, or the majority of, 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 of the 71 billion dollars. Uh, we are going to be doing, uh, I was going through some notes uh, earlier. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have about 44 schools that will have massive uh, work done on. This is in addition to the maintenance program of all 902 schools plus in our country, in, I outside of Georgetown in our regions. Uh, we will also be working on every single health facility in our country where people get better services, uh, where you know there is absolutely no reason for drugs and medical supplies to be in short supply. We have uh, inherited a failed uh, system and I, I, I'm happy to report uh, to our country that during the course of 2021, we have been able to get over that problem. And this year, uh, I believe that we are going to be at our top performance. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, support in our regions where health and education is concerned. We have quite a few hospitals that are going to be built. And I think the Minister of Health uh, would have spoken about that already. The Minister of Education would have already spoken about uh, some of the new schools. Uh, through the regional system as well, we would be building, like I said, about uh, 44 schools and extension to schools and dormitories and so forth. Uh, we have, uh, especially in the, the, the far hinterland areas in the North Park Ramas, we have a new dorm that has to be constructed at Cato because the school is, is becoming, you know, the <coughs> more students are, are going to school. We, we have quite a lot of work to do in the upper Mazaruni, uh, expansion work that we have to do for, for secondary school students. Uh, in in f some far areas in, in the Rupununi too as well, touching as far as uh, Masakanari, which is well known as Guns, where, where the YYs um, reside. Even on the, the near coastal areas too, we, we, have, uh, we have some secondary schools that we are currently building that we expect to finish uh, during the course of this year, one of which is the Abramsville Secondary School on the Esukebo Coast. Yeah. We are also doing some transformative projects uh, to provide employment opportunities for people in, in some of these regions. The monies that we spend is not just about the construction, but you are going to find more businesses created, you are going to find more jobs created, you are going to find more livelihoods enhanced, and that is how we want the regional economy to economies to, to be transformed. As a matter of fact, uh, we actually have uh, a manifesto commitment on regional economic transformation. And so the resources going into all of these regions, uh, you are going to find uh, a lot of people employed. Um, in some areas, uh, contractors t uh, keep telling us that some of them are behind time because they don't have enough people, they don't have staff. And, and, and that's a good sign uh, in because more Guyanese are, are, are getting employed. Yeah. And that's a commitment that we've made as well. Uh, I, I know for a fact that uh, in 2020 when we took government, the contractors database of the 10 regions uh, was 1,066 a, a contractors. La at the end of last year, we have over 1,460 contractors doing the, fi the, the main contracts in, in, in different parts of of the country. And so many of them are huge, some are medium, but the majority of them are small, small. people earning a few million dollars, being able to take care of their family. And, and, and I believe that uh, when they elevate further, uh, you will continue to see more people uh, get support. Some people get frustrated that they don't get enough, but we have to help everyone. And, and, and that is our commitment that, that everyone must get an opportunity to benefit from what we put into uh, or what we invest in our regions. Thank you so much, Minister. This is, this, this is a, a historic budget. Mm -hmm. It's the largest budget, and it's one that is set to tr really transform Guyana. So much of the administration's development, uh, developmental uh, projects and initiatives, we'll, we'll see much of that uh, progress throughout the year. So final thoughts on, on the budget, Minister. Yeah, well, as, I, as you <laughs> gear up for your budget <laughs> presentation, I'm sure after watching this, a lot of viewers might will want to see. Yeah, what uh, as a do. matter of fact, we have quite a, a number of roads, a few hundred roads that we have to do. People badger me every day about fixing their streets. 
so they can they can be rest assured that we are going to work assiduously this year to fix those things uh, with with of course uh, not just our ministry alone but with with other agencies of the government uh, we are going to be working very collaboratively to to get our budget implemented it will require a lot of hard work uh, one of the things that uh, I would like to to implore on on our citizens uh, keep abreast with what is happening and keep in touch with us as well I, I think they are the eyes and ears of what we do um, as a government and, and we would like to get feedback on how well we're doing and what can be done better and, and, and of course all of this would have to be taken in context of the resources that we have we have finite resources um, hopefully one of these days we'll get to a point where we have enough to do every single thing that everyone uh, wants us to do but uh, please don't be frustrated be patient and uh, we are we are here working for you thank you so much minister darmlal that has been uh minister darmlal uh, nigel darmlal the minister of local government and regional development speaking with us about budget 2022 this has been budget in focus and do join us for another segment thank you and goodbye <laughs>